It's hard to know where to start with Frog Fractions, so I guess the first thing I'll say is if you don't know about Frog Fractions, stop watching this video, don't look up anything, and play Frog Fractions. It's a game about fractions, boxing, the judicial system, capitalism, the list goes on, I shouldn't say any more than that, and I can't really review this new thing without spoiling the original, so go play it if you haven't already. Frog Fractions Game of the Decade Edition is the Unity remake that recently released on Steam, alongside a totally not suspicious piece of DLC called Hop's Iconic Cap. Spoilers, it's not just a hat. If you play with the hat, it starts out the same but with a hat, but very quickly turns into a completely new game featuring the protagonist long after the events of the first game, stuck in a dead-end job, awkwardly struggling to relate to his daughter, and most of all longing to relive the glory days of his original adventure. It turns out reliving the glory days of the original Frog Fractions is basically what this game is. It goes through a linear sequence of events, every so often the gameplay changes completely, there are lots of silly jokes, it's pretty much exactly what I would have originally expected as a follow-up to Frog Fractions. But the thing is, this isn't a follow-up to Frog Fractions, this is a follow-up to Frog Fractions 2 and 3. I'm using Jim, the creator's own terminology here by the way, which may or may not be a joke, but I'm going with it, where Frog Fractions 2 is the ARG that eventually, in December 2016, led to the discovery of Frog Fractions 3. That entire ridiculous method for delivering a game took any possible expectations for any game from him ever and threw them out the window. The ARG was an amazing story to follow, even though I didn't directly participate. Then best of all, Frog Fractions 3, and again I'm talking about the game at the end of the ARG, that game is shockingly good. It's genuinely funny like Frog Fractions 1, but unlike Frog Fractions 1, that humor is wrapped up in a brilliantly designed puzzle exploration game, one of the most underrated games of the past decade in my opinion. If you want to play that by the way, it's hidden within a game called Glitter Mitten Grove on Steam. All of that is to say, as a follow-up to that, Hop's Iconic Cap is incredibly disappointing. I'll set aside the fact that I wasn't surprised to discover a new game in Frog Fraction's Game of the Decade Edition, because if a game is good, it should probably be good whether it's a surprise or not. But to me, Hop's Iconic Cap is not good. It presents itself as a new entry in the same vein as the original, but I think it mostly misses what made the original special. The original Frog Fractions goes through all these genres not just for variety, not just to subvert expectations, but because it is a parody of those genres. It's a game that pokes fun at all kinds of conventions and games. It pokes fun at shallow educational games, it pokes fun at hollow reward structures, and most of all it takes on the form of so many different genres in order to poke fun at those genres and riff on them. When I'm playing Dance Dance Revolution in Frog Fractions, yes, I'm sort of playing a rhythm game in the same way that when I'm watching Shaun of the Dead, I'm sort of watching a zombie movie. But the value comes from a completely different place. It comes from the moment when the game baits me into realizing that I can just mash all the buttons and win, which makes this entire exercise hilariously stupid. Every time Frog Fractions takes on a new form, it finds new clever ways to play with the expectations that come along with that form. Which brings me to the problem with this new DLC. In Hop's Iconic Cap, when I'm playing a point-and-click adventure game, I'm mostly just playing a point-and-click adventure game. There's a little bit of that original Frog Fraction spirit in how you have to use the items, but even that feels somewhat like a rehash of the text adventure segment of the original game. Then there's tons of dialogue that isn't poking fun at dialogue options in games like the court scene in the original Frog Fractions, but rather just straight up dialogue that's trying to be funny in the same way any comedic point and click adventure game tries to be funny. The original game had surface level written gags as well, but for me they were hit or miss, they weren't the main appeal of the game. I would recommend looking at that court scene from the original, and if you think that dialogue itself is consistently funny, you'll probably enjoy Hop's Iconic Cap a lot more than I did. For me, those jokes mostly didn't quite land. They felt like stretching to fill in more dialogue options, which is understandable, and I still like the scene because it doesn't overstay its welcome. It makes its joke about dialogue options being pointless, then it's over. But about half the runtime of Hop's Iconic Cap is taken up by this type of dialogue, and if there is some larger purpose to it all, it was not clear to me. There are some high points, the turn-based RPG boss battle was funny once I figured out what to do, although the game didn't do much to lead me to that realization, so there was some trial and error before getting to that point. And I kind of enjoyed the motherload knockoff, it went in a few interesting directions I didn't expect. 
These moments are just too rare, and the uninteresting segments last too long. There's a consistent feeling of forward momentum in the original game that didn't carry over at all. I half expected the surprise of the hat being real content to just be a fakeout to get people's guard down so that he could catch them with the real surprise, which is another game hidden within the hat game somehow. I think if Jim wanted to subvert expectations for the third time, he needed a crazy scheme like that. The other option would be to just stop trying to subvert expectations entirely and just make an interesting game. I think that was a valid option too, Frog Fractions 3 proved he's capable of designing something really special even after putting aside the silly tricks. Sadly for me, Hop's Iconic Cap didn't really work as a surprise, then it didn't really work as a game either. In both ways, it felt like an unsuccessful attempt to recapture the Frog Fractions magic. Part of me wants to keep hoping that this entire game exists to hide the true Frog Fractions 4, but it doesn't seem like anyone's finding any clues at the moment. If something ever is found, I will definitely be playing it, but as for Hop's Iconic Cap as we know it right now, I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.